as human beings, we believe, like so many people, before I give them a workout plan, they're talking about recovery. Everybody, everybody that hears me speak, they want to go straight to recovery. Work out first. Huh. Work out first. <laughs> before you talk to me about recovery, work out first. Whenever I talk to people, people take my words and they, and they, and they put it in a way to where they want to feel comfortable. This guy, you know, they, they, they want to put you in a box. They want to put a title on you. No, you're putting a title on me to make yourself feel better about yourself. I made this person. I made this person by diving in to the insecurities that life gave me. Because now they're yours. They're yours to own. If you're not smart, call yourself dumb. It's okay. Because you are. But take that now as you're putting yourself down. If you're fat, call yourself fat. I used to be 300 pounds. Mm. We, we want to talk so soft to ourselves. We're looking for that recovery day. And that recovery day is everything in your life. Everything in your life is that recovery day. We're looking for it. It's not coming. It's not coming. Mm -hmm. Get over that recovery day. And that's the mentality I took with me. And what happened through that process was all the frivolous things of life started to float away. I used to tell people lies so they would like me. Because mm. I was so insecure. When you start to build yourself up and start to have the one thing that we don't have is confidence. Real, authentic confidence from hard work. Everything else goes away. You, you no longer look to other people. You now know. I walk in a room now and I know the hours and years and decades I put into David Goggins. That's something, it's not on the wall. It's not a trophy on the wall. It's not a medal on your neck. It is actually a feeling in your heart. And people go, why don't you ever smile? I don't have to. Yeah, I do have a stoic look on my face. I'm a, I'm a very focused person. But the feeling I have in my soul and in my heart, that's why I don't need to smile. I don't need to smile. I don't need you to look at me and say, oh my God, you look happy. Because half of us aren't happy. Mm -hmm. we're, we're giving you something that we think you want to see. I don't do that anymore. I don't care how you perceive David Goggins. Because through my journey, I figured out the one piece I was missing. I thought it was cars. I thought it was women. I thought it was money. I thought it was everything. The one piece I was missing was me having the courage to face myself. Mm. And once you do that on a daily basis, it's not about the running. Where, people are going to be, you about working out. Where I got my work ethic from was the hours I had to spend learning this. When you sit down and you're not smart, and you have a disability, yeah. and you still want to be at the mm. top of your class, I didn't want to just get by. When I realized that I can learn, do hard work, and I can beat the Val Victorian in school, but I got put in 10 hours more mm -hmm. a day than he does. You know what kind of strength comes from that? When you're sitting down, that guy, that, that Val Victorian studied for an hour, and you know I caught you. I caught you, and I am dumb. But I have the work ethic to catch you. That's where David Goggins got really invented. Yeah. was at a kitchen table with 20 spiral notebooks that were empty. And then three months, they were full. And when you can go through that, I still have them in my storage unit. You go through these spiral notebooks of your life, and you realize, this is how I learned. This is unbelievable. There's no miles. It's not about the miles. It's that. Having a discipline every day to say, for me to learn this one math problem, it's going to take me 10 hours. Wow. And that's where it... And you realize through hard work, you can do, you can outwork anybody, mm -hmm. no matter how badass they are. But that's the part people don't want to yeah. dive into. Yeah, it starts with yourself, man. You got to start diving into those things that you are afraid of. You don't gain confidence by going to the spot that makes you feel good. It's gonna be a false reality. And the second life gives you that challenge, all you want to do is go back to what made you confidence. Or, 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 or what gave you confidence? Is that happy spot? No. What gives you confidence, what gave me confidence, was spending years at a kitchen table trying to learn how to read and write on my own. Realizing I can't learn the way you learn. Mm. I can't. But I can learn. What gives you confidence is not being afraid. It's overcoming the fear 
I used to stutter severely bad. So right now, I don't know how many people are going to watch this. Mm -hmm. You know what gives me confidence? Is knowing I no longer care <laughs> if I sit or start stuttering to you. Yeah. That's what gives me confidence is facing these things, overcoming them. And maybe not overcoming them every day, but facing them and facing them and facing them. Pretty soon like this, you know what, man? This is where it's at. Mm. It's not in that comfort zone. It's in the discomfort zone is where my confidence is getting built. Mm -hmm. That's where it's getting built. But people want to, they want an easier answer. Yeah. There has to be an easier way. There's not. I'm sorry. I searched for it and I still felt empty. Mm -hmm. I coach a lot of people nowadays, billionaires, who call me on the phone and say, man, I'm still missing something. It's because they did what they were good at. And they had this beautiful family, two, three houses, cars, everything. Has everything to work. On the outside looking in, like, my God, man, how can you be unhappy? I walk around with the backpack with all my stuff in it. Happiest person in the world. Have nothing. Happy as hell. It's because I found out the whole key to life. It's not in all that. You have to face yourself. So many people live to be 100 years old and they die miserable having everything because they never examined. I call it my live autopsy. Hmm. You never examine this. Happiness, peace, enlightenment, it's all up here, man. It's all up here. If I start talking like this, people go, man, you know, uh, no, no, it's the truth, man. All up here. You just got to be willing to go and face it. And that's the hard part. And when my mom left my dad, we went to nothing for a period of time before she got on her feet. Right. And that $7 a month place used to be it was my, it was who I was. I was no one, I was in the sewer. My mom went there, I had nothing. And you always feel like you have nothing. I had, I had achieved so much. I was a Navy SEAL, I'd gone through Ranger School, I've gone through Delta Force Selection Training. I, I, I'd done so much, I, I run 200 miles, pull up records, everything. Learned to read and write, became pretty intelligent. And I still was like, man, what is wrong with me? It wasn't until I got real sick, and I talk about in the last chapter of that book, I got real sick, and I was about um, 38 years old. And my life got real quiet. I, I went from running 205 miles in 39 hours to I couldn't get out of bed. The doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong with me, but once again, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. In that moment when my whole <clears throat> life changed, I went from a guy who worked out every day, trained every day, to a guy who couldn't get out of bed. My life was taken from me. And wow. that's when I realized I hadn't thought, hadn't taken time to think about what I'd done in my life. I hadn't reflected. I'd done all these things, but there was no finish line. I still believe that, but you must have time to reflect. Yeah. I was just going. I wouldn't even, I finished a race of life and I wouldn't even receive my medal. I go on. Right. Most people Stop. sit around and that's what they like. <laughs> they, they need the ceremony if I accomplish something. Yeah. I haven't done anything. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm just getting started. I'm just getting started. That's right. When I started figuring out life, that I was leaving so much in the tank, I call it my 40% rule. Yeah. I was leaving so much in the tank. Once I realized, my God, man, I was this dumb, fat kid being bullied. And now I'm a 180 pound person, lost 106 pounds in less than three months. Learn to read, learn to do this, learn to do that. I was like, I need more. Mm -hmm. I was fueling my mind with everything. And I never took time to say, my God, you came from this hell and you're here. So those insecurities, and this is how I explain it the best way. SEAL training became pretty hard and a lot of guys weren't getting through it. So they designed a SEAL pep prep program. Mm. They sent me there to train these kids, wow. yeah. young kids. So when they get to Navy SEAL training, man, they were physical studs. They were running, swimming. I mean, they were, they were hybrids. But they get to buds and the same amount of people would quit. Why is that? This is why. We were training bigger, stronger, faster quitters. It's not about- Not the mind. That's right. I wasn't getting into the dungeon of these guys' minds. I wasn't building that so-called mental toughness. Mental toughness isn't something that you sample. It's something that you live in every day. 